Hey everybody, it's Adam from Encounter Wargaming and today I'm going to teach you the basics of how to build a model. Alright, I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, dude, I already know how to build models. Now, a lot of people out there think they know how to build models and they skip out on the basic 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 of basics and so I want to do a video and there's there's multiple reasons for this so number one is just I think it will generally help everybody out there get better at their hobby um, but secondly I do commission painting and a lot of the times a question I have is are your models already built properly <laughs> and uh, it took a couple mistakes to realize I had to put the caveat properly on the end um, because there's very simple things that so many people forget I mean just removing mold lines and I get it it's tedious it's annoying um, and sometimes you think ah once I get all the paint on people won't notice it anyways but it makes a huge difference and people always notice how to drill out your gun barrels how to apply glue properly how how do you just just so many things cut just cutting the model out of the frame you can do it in a right way or a wrong way and so i just want to show you the basics of how to build a model properly and i think uh, i think everyone um, could get something out of this even if it's just a refresher and the beautiful thing is i'm uh, basically just going to use clippers a hobby knife and glue that's it so all your files throw them in the garbage. All your whatever you got, throw in the garbage. All you need is clippers, a hobby knife, and glue, okay? No fancy tricks, just the basics to build a model properly. Here's a funny story. I had one of my customers recently. He, uh, he thought he had it all nailed down, packed, right? He had them built properly for me, set it up. This is a multi, uh, uh, He's done. He's done multiple commissions with me, and uh, he sent me this 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 load of new um, chaos models, all built and ready to go. The trick is he removed the mold lines with files, right? And so here's the thing with files: it leaves grain marks in your model, and it's such a blunt like it's such a blunt weapon that just takes so many iterations of moving around your model that you're bound to screw something up and you end up leaving it it rough um, and whatnot for the paint to go over anyway so this is gonna help so many people out as well as give my uh, customers a basic definition for what I mean when I say properly okay so there you go I hope you guys enjoy this let's jump in on the hobby table and get started okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a um, a armager warglaive and uh, that, so that's from the Forge Bane kit that came out. Um, you got two of them in the little box and it's kind of like the close combat, um, scout around, get up close. You got a sweeping attack type armager um, from your little, uh, you know, your chainsword guy. And, uh, and you got this crazy D3 shot melt gun, which is pretty, uh, pretty badass. And so, yeah, they're the rough them up, uh, wolf pack type little mini knight and uh yeah so i've got a bunch of i've got a bunch of knights painted i figure why not build these guys up they're the you know kind of the first of the um of the uh armager class ones to come out and they're the last to get built for me in fact it's the only type of knight that i have left to 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 build and paint and so why not and why not show you guys how to build a model um on something that has a bunch of pieces um a bunch of cool little tricks and options probably to try out on this guy and uh and so there you go so we're gonna build a we're gonna build this guy and so let's just put this off to the side and i'm just going to describe to you what kind of tools we are going to need and just some some quick tips on these tools and so here you go so this is all you need to build models properly right here for the most part okay now there are some exceptions but i'm going to give you guys the basics that'll cover um, cover most of your bases when you're getting out there and getting your hands dirty building models okay so you need um, number one let's start with these a pair of clippers okay so these are pretty simple these ones are from privateer press i believe um, now the new gw ones look uh, pretty swanky but they're also expensive and so here's my one tip okay with uh with clippers get clippers that have a flat edge okay on one side so you see here we have a we'll get right up close on this side they have a beveled edge okay and then on this side it's perfectly flat 
okay? So there you go. That's my ideal clipper right there. And, uh, and so there you go. So there, there's a good set of clippers. Now also, you need a hobby knife. Now I use this kind of the, the old school one from the GW um, toolbox they put out, I don't know, 10 years ago. Um, and I mean, you can get reloads for that. I'll just, why not? I have them right here. I'll show you. You get this from like an art supply store. This is what, I don't know, 10 or 15, uh, 15 blades. Yeah, so 15 blades for, I don't know, it was like five bucks. So there you go. You get all the reloads you want. So just always have a fresh blade in there. It's just gonna help you cut. Um, these th The blades are super, super sharp, but if you work with a sharp blade, you're probably going to cut yourself less. I mean, that's just knife safety 101. Always have a sharp blade, because then you're fighting with it less. It's gonna do what it's supposed to do, and you're less likely to kind of uh, stab yourself by accident as you're trying to make something go that's not going because it's an inferior um, working order. Okay, so here, last thing, glue. This is my favorite glue out there. Um, here, actually, I got a, I got a fresh one because I always keep extras of my basics on hand. Um, and so it's, I guess it's Arms Keeper. I don't even know the brand. <laughs> um, Arms Keeper Super Glue. Now, I always build models with super glue, even if they are plastic models, okay? Reason being, uh, plastic glue it uh, it actually melts the plastic and binds it together and i do not like that okay i want my models to um yeah it's a it's it just creates a nice clean seal and you can put any kind of model together with it and you don't have issues like i don't know let's say you want to rip a guy's gun off because you know the meta change you need a plasma gun instead of a melty gun or whatever um, if you use super glue you'll definitely be able to rip that gun off if you use plastic glue you will never get that puppy off and so just use super glue um, a little trick if you do want to rip models apart that are glued together with with super glue you can throw that model in the freezer and the glue becomes much more brittle and easier to uh, break apart so there you go freeze it and break it um, the reason i like uh, this arms keeper extra thick cyanoacrylate Cyanoracrylate is basically just super glue. The extra thick stuff is because uh, uh, it helps set faster. So what I'm explaining to you here is my like, this is how you build models properly, but also still work efficiently type model, right? And so the extra thick stuff helps you to stay working fast, which is how you got to do things. That's everyone, you know, you only got a certain amount of time, so you don't want to be fighting with your with your hobby supplies. And so there you go. That that's my stuff. There's other great stuff out there. Why don't you why don't you throw down in the comments what brands of stuff that you guys like, and we can have a nice conversation about that. Um, but there you go. There's there's some simple stuff for me. Um, to just make do with the basics. Okay, so now let's get on to building that model. So you, every model kit um, generally comes with an instruction booklet, okay? And so here, here's the instruction booklet. All right, now you might say, ah, who needs instructions? And for most, for most model kits, you know, you may not really, like building a space marine, Generally, you don't, but a lot, a lot more of the model kits these days that GW is making um, have just really strange configurations, and so I do highly suggest building the model based on the instructions. Okay, um, so first thing I'll do uh, is open this up, and then I'll just start. I'll just go across the line and see what pieces I need, and I'll actually clip them out, and I'll and I'll line them up on my counter. Okay. So let's start doing that. So we need pieces 35, uh, 39, 16, and 30 to complete 16A. That's a leg, okay? So let's let's throw this aside and pull our pieces over here. So um, the thing about the numbers is fantastic because you can just go find it on the frame. And so here we go. Here's 35. Now, here we go. Tip number one. Uh, use the dang clippers, don't just push the model out of the frame, okay? You want to nicely clip it. And, uh, and what I do want to do, actually, um, especially with pieces like this, this is a great example for the first thing. Let's just rip these frames apart. Um, especially pieces that are two halves that are going to glue together, okay? I actually want to cut just off of the joint. Um, as opposed to flat on it, and I'll explain why in a minute. So just go ahead and do that all 
the way around. Okay. Great. Okay, so you have piece number one out, okay? And you have those little tags where we clipped the model out. Now, that's perfect, okay? You don't want to leave them there, so <laughs> having them on there is not perfect, but that's, that's what it should look like, okay? Now, this is where your hobby knife comes in to play. So we are going to take this guy and actually get rid of all of those little flecks, okay? So, I want to get my blade flat on this edge, okay? And just slowly come at this piece, flush with the model, take a couple passes to just get it off. Now, I'm also going to come in on the side, okay? And get that piece off right there, okay? So there you go. Now it's nice and flat. I didn't dig into the model, so that's what you want to be careful of is like digging in because you still want this nice rounded shape, okay? And if you have any extra, you can actually take your blade and just flatten it, okay? So have it like perpendicular to the piece and just flatten, flatten it down, okay? There you go. That's perfect technique right there. That kind of scraping action, you're going to use that a lot, especially when we get to removing mold lines, okay? So let's go ahead and you can see that when you get some practice, you can actually go pretty quick with this process, okay? Take a couple passes at that one, flatten it out, especially on those rounded bits. Some more right here. Okay. There you go. So that is how to clip a model out and remove the flashing. Okay, so now what we're gonna do um, is I'm actually going to take out all the pieces. Now this is a speed technique, right? I'm gonna take out all the pieces from the entire first page. So let's go ahead and do that and we'll be right back. And here they are all laid out. So I've gone ahead, clipped them and taken the flash off all of them. And the next conversation I wanna have with you guys is mold lines, okay? So the mold line basically comes up as two parts of the press mold come together and a tiny bit of plastic finds itself in between the two molds, okay? Now, on, now GW is getting pretty good at hiding these mold lines on a lot of kits, okay? But sometimes um, they still come up because it's, it's dang well unavoidable, okay? So what I want to do is show you a mold line. So there you go, you see it? It's just a line, just, just cutting that thing in half, right? Because it's got press molded in there, okay? This line basically goes along the entire half of this thing, okay? So we need to get rid of that because they stick out. And when you paint it, like, and you let's say you wash this model, you wash it and then you have this line on your model okay? and you can't have that. So you got to remove it. And the way you remove them is by taking your knife and doing the same scraping action across it. Okay. Very simple. Now don't get too aggressive that you make a big flat spot on your model, but get it done. Okay. Cause you got to remove them. Now it gets annoying. When you have multiple grooves like this spot right here, but just do your best, okay? It's worth it, trust me. You don't want the mold lines because then your model looks goofy, okay? So get in there, get them done, get them removed. This is essential. When I say build a model properly, this step, this step will take you a little bit of time, okay? It will. I mean, it just, it just will. But it's going to be worth it, and it's going to, you're going to tell the difference. You can tell the difference between somebody who took the time and somebody who didn't, okay? So on both of these pieces, there are mold lines like crazy across the whole thing. And then I'll show you one more piece in this early stage um, and we'll remove that one as well. 
Okay, look, see? So I took my time on the first one, get familiar with the pieces, show you guys as the example, and now I can basically speed through this thing. Okay, now don't get too crazy. You leave like crazy tool marks all over the place because that's the worst too, and you just see tool marks all over. Okay. Now, there you go. There's mold lines all the way across this thing, all the way around all these little round things. So just do it. Now here's a little thing. Okay, so so and it's coming up right now. Okay, so when I drag this way with the knife, okay, the plastic tears a certain way and leaves little lines. That just means I go back the other way and the plastic will smoothen out, okay? If you're finding that, if you have the attention to detail enough to notice the plastic uh, rippling, that just means you wanna go the other way. Now that's pretty high attention to detail. Another thing is if you find yourself leaving a bunch of tool marks, okay? Just go flatten it out by scraping over top in one big swoop, okay? If you're getting too detailed, that you're leaving a bunch of little lines in there, go back, do one fell swoop over the whole thing. Just flatten them out, get rid of them. You don't want your tool marks there. You look like, look like you're just bludgeoning the thing, you're just stabbing it to pieces, okay? You don't want that either. <laughs> Fabulous, so there you go. So, so this is all mold lines removed and all uh, flash removed. So there you go. So now we're finally at a stage where we can just glue this first step. Okay. So let's, uh, let's just do it then. Let's take this piece right here. Now, this is a great example of, um, there's, there's a lot to learn on pieces like this. Okay. On pieces that are two halves that come together because what inevitably happens, okay, is we'll get a gap where the two pieces join, or at least an ugly, hideous line, okay? So now hopefully what I show you will help us to get rid of that. Just found some more mold lines. Just gonna get rid of those, okay? Same thing for you guys. If you notice mold lines, go back and get them. Don't just leave them there. You don't want that. You don't want mold lines, okay? Get rid of them. All right, so, so what we're gonna do for these pieces uh, where these gaps come, okay, or where there are two halves that are getting glued together, okay, so we're just gonna put the tiniest bit of glue along every seam, okay? Just a tiny bit, don't go crazy now. This is where the extra thick stuff will come in handy because the thin stuff will just seep around all over the place. Okay, now we can stick those two halves together. Hold them nice and tight all the way around. Okay, nice and tight. Okay, because you want to do as little cleanup work at the end as possible. Okay. If you get some squeeze out on your glue, that's good. Because then what we can do is we can take our finger, smooth out this glue that's seeping out everywhere. And that'll help, one, seal the gap, but also keep the model looking clean, okay? Okay, good. So we'll leave that behind. Go ahead and do everything else to spec as per the instructions, and we'll be right back. All right, I was gonna finish building it, but I wanna show you guys something. So, now that the glue's had a little bit of time to dry, you can see this seam here running across pieces like this. I'm sorry, let me get it up nice and close. Okay, you can see this seam here. I wanna focus closer up. Okay. Bah. Okay, you can see that seam there, right? Awesome, and it basically runs down the entire model, okay? It's unsightly. Oh, you do not want that, okay? So what we're gonna do um, is we're actually, now a lot of people would say use like a gap filler, like, I don't know, liquid green stuff or something like that. Um, in my opinion, there's too much fiddling around with that. 
takes too long. It's a whole other step. We're already here with our basic tools, okay? So what I would do is I would just, um, on a slight angle, so not totally perpendicular to it, but on a slight angle, I would scrape so that I'm pushing plastic from the model to fill itself in, okay? Now, if you can tell that like maybe even one side is a little raised compared to the other, like just by the slightest amount, fold the raised side over into the lower side, okay? Boom. So there you go. So there's a little trick. Now, the uh, the bonus with these models is there uh, there are armor plates that go on a lot of these parts here. So we may not have to worry about too much of it, but I will do a tiny bit more just to prove the point. Okay. Beautiful. Now I know it's tough because there are multiple tiers and multiple layers and like all sorts of details to go around. Now I know it's going to be a little bit of a pain in the butt. Okay, but try your best. Doesn't take much. This little extra step will help go a long way to make your model look less like a push fit model kit just thrown together. Okay. Boom. All right. So there's one side, not so bad. So here's another side where like, there's just a big, just a big gap right there. Right. Okay. So we just take our knife and we just push and scrape together. Should hopefully, especially cause it's supposed to look like one flat solid piece. Okay. Just blowing the excess, uh, flakes of plastic off. <laughs> okay. So that should help once we get paint on there. Yeah. So I can run my finger there. There's no longer, there's no longer a gap there. Okay. It's beauties. That's what we want. Okay. And I'll just fix this little gap here. Beauties. Okay, so go ahead. You can do that on both legs, and then uh, and then we'll get this guy glued together. And uh, and just a quick note, guys. Um, if you're doing night kits, especially, um, you'll you'll probably want to do stuff in sub assemblies. Okay, so be very careful. So stuff you stuff you want a different color, just set them off to the side. So this is the crotch armor plate. So I'm just gonna set it off to the side. Okay, and I'm going to continue building the model because I want these to be red and I want these to be all silver. And so we can get away with painting them uh, separately. Now I'll show you guys later, um, once we get all of the pieces that we want red separated, I'll show you guys later kind of how I set them up to paint them separately. But for now, let's keep plugging away and we'll just put them off to the side. Okay. And so let's keep going on that and we'll be right back at the next step. All right, so this is the next step, but I've just realistically gone ahead and cut out all the rest of the pieces. And now I'm just going to remove the flash and mold lines from everything. This kit is basic enough that you can get away with this. Um, and if you still want to go fast, cut a bunch of pieces out, do a bunch of steps all at the same time. And it's a more advanced kit. I, I generally would tend to lay them out in exact order of use in the instructions into rows. And then you just go ahead and, you know, piece in the top left goes to the piece right next to it and so on you just build your way in order so there you go so go ahead and remove the flash and mold lines from all this and uh, build your model kit up um, and I'll talk to you about uh, uh, the last thing that I want to talk to you about which is um, just sub assemblies and then we're done so there you go okay and so I actually remember I do want to show you how to drill out a gun barrel and so this melt gun here um, if you notice kind of the difference here between the stubber and the melt again, the stubber kind of has like a bullet hole type slot in it, but the, the melt gun, it's totally flat. Okay. So we're going to solve that. We're going to take our hobby knife and right in the middle, curve a slight starter hole. Okay. And that's like a pilot hole for the real thing. So I got my drill, my pin vise here. And 
start a hole, keep us right in the middle. So you can be a little more accurate because uh, these things do tend to move around slightly as you drill in. So then just drill in a little bit and bing, bang, boom. So now look at that. So now we have a nice hole in the middle there. doesn't look so silly because our, you know, our bullets got to go somewhere, right? And so there you go. So now we have a nice drilled out gun barrel. So our model is assembled. We have uh, most of the pieces ready for our sub assembly. So I just want to show you something and then we can wrap up this video. Beautiful. So we're back. So now sub assemblies is a great process for painting things that are predominantly different colors from each other um, to save you some time from having to uh, be very careful about your base coating. And so for the most part, this, the entirety of this guy, with the exception of this one armor panel right here, is going to be silver, okay? And, uh, and all of these armor panels are going to be red, okay? Now, they do have some gold trim um, because that's how I paint my knights, and I'll show you an example of a painted one right here, okay? So I have my halverin, and you can see all the robot skeleton is silver, one color right and I, of course I did some washes and some highlights and some dirt marks and stuff like that but for the most part it's all red right or it's all silver and the armor panels as you can see are all red and so I can get away with um, air, painting all these armor panels separately okay now with the um, with the airbrush okay it gets uh, it gets a little bit fiddly to um, uh, to paint these things okay because you know, you're holding on to it and you're spraying this color on. And so, so the question is what to do to make the process easier, right? So this guy, the answer is simple. Glue him down onto this base um, lightly, you know, just get two little dots of glue. So he just holds on carefully. Okay. So just glue him on there and then, um, and then you can hold him by this thing, right? You can hold him by the base. Okay. And so let's just put this aside. What you can do is for all of these loose bits, is well uh, you can make a frame and i have one sitting off to the side here so let me rearrange this and i'll show you my frames um, and how i make them and then you can get off on your own okay i know it looks messy and there's a lot of stuff here but it's all going to be very important for showing you so i've uh, i've recently built up two of the invictor tactical war suits and if you'll notice he's looking a little bit bare you may ask where the heck are all his armor plates great question love to chat about it so i've got this dude all stepping up on these boxes ready to go um i got him still uh in a few modular pieces here you know but uh for the most part like he's he's built right he's he's basically built the basic shape it's all there ready to go um, but if you notice i got all of his little armor plates and stuff over here i actually have two Invictor war suits were the stuff right here because I'm doing painting two of them at the same time. Okay, so um, this guy is basically at the same stage as our armager Helverin buddy, um, where he's got all the extra bits and on all the stuff that's going to be silver. So same idea. This guy is going to be all um, like a dark metallic -y silver. Okay, so I'll put him back here uh, so the two naked bros can be together. All right, now what to do with all these little bits? Well. I made up these little frames for all the pieces that will be the same color okay so these are all going to be white okay so the white armor panels um because i'm painting them luna wolves uh to match my other space marines all these i'll prime them prime them white all together and then work up from my leather brown to my beige to my white color all on this frame okay now what's this frame made of well you probably recognize this is just sprue Right? And then I, out on the outside, I just use my pin vise to drill holes in it and then set up little pieces of paper clip, okay? To just hold the pieces on it. Um, and on the other side of the pieces, I've just drilled in a tiny bit, okay? So that, so just enough and the tiniest bit of glue so that I can just break this piece off once I'm done painting it, okay? Um, very, very handy for painting things in sub assemblies. And then I can just work off these frames with my airbrush. And, uh, you know, you can kind of do details on this or you can break them off, whatever is most handy for you. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so there you go. So have some fun setting up all your extra little bits on frames, um, and getting them ready to paint. And so I'll do, do you up a quick example, right? So I got this piece right here. Let's say I wanted to put it up on this frame. So you get your sprue, you know, you put in your paper clip. And then, you know, you just take a, take a pin vise 
and drill a hole in. Now, be the only thing to watch out for is that you're, you're very, very careful not to drill all the way through your piece, because then you're having, then you're having a bad day, and you're having to do extra work to fill fill holes and re-sculpt details you may have mashed on your way through. Okay, so I find put your finger on the other side so you're motivated not to drill in your own finger, but also when if you work slowly enough. You know, you might feel a little bit of pressure coming out the other side before you pop through. That's when you know to stop. So take some glue, put it in that tiny little hole, and then uh, and then you would just glue it onto the frame like so. Right? So there you go. So then it's stuck on there. You can set up all your pieces around like that. So later on, when it's done being painted, you just pop it off, toss it to the side. Right? easy peasy lemon squeezy so there you go that's a bonus tip i mean this is an advanced technique you do not need to know that um, but all the stuff we covered today right clipping your models out cleaning off mold lines drilling out gun barrels that's a bonus uh you don't have to but hey there's one extra tool for drilling out gun barrels um, and then proper gluing proper cleaning up seams and gaps and stuff without having to use green stuff and all those fillers. Um, there you go, guys. There's a basic tutorial on how to build a model properly. Um, guys, that's it for today. Let's wrap this up. So there you guys go. That is how you build a model properly. I hope you find that helpful for the next time you are building a model kit and uh, maybe even just that removing the mold line technique is good for going back and uh, models that you haven't painted yet but maybe even that you've already primed just go back and remove those mold lines um, you can start cutting them out of your frame properly so you don't damage the model you can start removing those flash um, bits of flash so that you don't have just chunks hanging off a shoulder anymore and uh, and yeah your model can actually start to fit more into the aesthetic as opposed to looking like a push fit model kit and so um, so there you go so i hope it was helpful i hope you learned a couple little extra tricks and techniques as well like how to properly drill your gun barrels and how to set up um, a uh, a yeah just just a multi oh my gosh I already forgot the term. <laughs> how to sub assemblies, how to set up for sub assemblies um, easily, especially if you have an airbrush um, so that you can access all around the part um, on those frames with the paper clips. And so that's how I do it. Uh, if you have other cool ways of doing your sub assemblies, keeping it neat and organized and uh, giving yourself easy access to all the parts, I'd love to hear how you do it. Um, and so there you go. So shove your comments in the description or down in the comment section. Um, there you go. So, so let's wrap this up guys. If you liked that video and you found it helpful, love if you would just hit subscribe down there, hit the little bell. If you want to know when future video tutorials come out much like this or battle reports or whatever in the future, we do all sorts of stuff. Um, guys, and if you really liked our stuff, you can support us by buying a t-shirt from Spreadshirt. You can also jump down to the Patreon link below and become a patron of the channel today for as little as a dollar video you can support all the stuff that we do here like these tutorials like battle reports like terrain tutorials painting tutorials all the stuff that we do we would love your support so we can keep making it better and better and better and we'd screw up less rules because we'd be in a less of a rush all the time when we're doing battle reports and stuff and uh anyway it'd be so great if you could support us it would be awesome it just helps make everything that we do here better and better and better for you guys um there you go so that's the whole shabiel like it share it and do all the nine especially hey do you got a friend who is terrible at building models share it with them maybe and uh yeah show them the glory of the simple easy quick way to build up your model kits guys that's all for today we will see you at our next encounter I like a monkey in a rocket on his way back home. Okay. Scratching his head.